I don't know about you, but I have been dying to do a Petty Pendergrass production on this individual that you see right here on your screen. Now, let's not first off, let's not get too excited. It's not what you think it is, but it will suffice considering about who it is about. So I don't have to go into the whole diatribe of who this is. We know it's Dylan Roof. We know what he did. So let's just cut straight to the chase of why we are here today. So according to this article that is coming from KTLA, it says man who killed nine in Charleston church shooting stages hunger strike and complains of quote unquote harsh treatment to that. I say good if they can't get him behind bars the way he should really be got. Then I say stall him out until he's ready. To, I don't know to maybe take his own self out or until that time when he takes, you know, that that um, lethal cocktail. But let's go ahead and get into it. White supremacist mass murderer Dylan Roof staged a hunger strike this month while on federal death row, alleging in letters to the Associated Press that he's been targeted by staff, verbally harassed and abused without cause and treated disproportionately harsh. Oh, they're being mean to poor Dilly. Who gives a fuck? He killed nine people. He deserves that and a whole lot more. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he's embellishing a lot of this stuff right now in order to try to garner sympathy. But the thing is, no one that I can think of off the top of my head even feels even remotely an out a shred of sympathy for this guy, except for maybe other people who think like him. But then again, maybe they're not worried about him either. And clearly they aren't because I don't know many people who have written him letters. But let's continue. The 25 year old Roof, who killed non black members during a Bible study in Charleston, South Carolina in 2015, told the Associated Press in a letter dated February 13th that the staff at the federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana, and it's amazing because I just talked about that location in another video, feel justified in their conduct since I am hated by the general public. A person familiar with the matter said Roof had been on a hunger strike but was no longer on one as of this week. I guess he was starving. And he probably went on a hunger strike because he was afraid they might have been poisoning his food. Uh, the person couldn't immediately provide specific details about the length of the hunger strike or whether medical staff needed to intervene. The person wasn't authorized to discuss the matter publicly and spoke to the Associated Press on condition of being anonymous. Wrote, I'm sorry, Roof wrote in his letter to the AP that he went on the hunger strike to protest the treatment he received from a Bureau of Prisons disciplinary hearing officer over earlier complaints that he was refused access to the law library and access to a copy machine to file legal papers. Roof's February 13th letter indicated he was already several days into a hunger strike and he wrote in a follow-up letter that the protest ended a day later after corrections officers forcibly tried to take his blood and insert an IV into his arm causing him to briefly pass out. I feel confident I could have gone much much longer without food Roof wrote in the February 16th follow-up letter. It's just not worth being murdered over. Trust me, Dylan Roof. See, here's the thing. You did something unspeakable. You planned a massacre out for six months and you killed nine people. You think people are going to just forget that? Yeah, we know what happened now five years ago, but people do not forget that. They have been out for Dylan Roof's blood since day one. And I'm so glad that he's getting tortured right now. I actually prefer this happening leading up until the day he actually has to, you know, take his last breath. His dying breath at that. The allegations could not immediately be verified. And a spokeswoman for the Bureau of Prisons said the agency had no comment on Ruth's allegations, citing privacy concerns. Like I said, I would not be surprised if he's over embellishing all of this. I'm not saying that what is going on with them isn't happening, but I won't be surprised if he's adding more to this in order to garner sympathy, which we all know he's not going to get. Ruth's lawyer said in a statement that they were working with BOP to resolve the issues addressed in the letters. Ruth's lawyers filed an appeal to his federal convictions and death sentence last month, arguing that he was quote unquote mentally ill. And I put the quotes in there because I refuse to say that he is mentally ill when he represented himself at his capital trial. In a 321 page legal brief, Ruth's lawyers asked the federal appeals court in Richmond, Virginia to review 20 issues, including errors that say they were made by the judge and prosecutors that tainted his sentencing. One of their main arguments is the U.S. District Court Judge Richard Gergel 
should not have allowed Ruth to represent himself during the penalty phase of his trial because he was a 22 year old ninth grade dropout. Well, that's his fault that he was a ninth grade dropout at the age. That's listen. That's his fault that he wanted to be a high school dropout who believed his sentence didn't matter because white nationalists would free him from prison after an impending race war. And here we are five years later and no one has come from that opioid written scale in the sky to come down and swoop him and pick him up out of the um, prison he's in. So basically, Dylan Roof, you did all of this for nothing and you're going to get and suffer the consequences. It is more than deserved. And we are literally counting down the days when it till it happens. Hopefully we are all still alive when it does happen. Roof is the first person to be ordered executed for a federal hate crime. Attorney General William Barr announced in July that the government will resume executions and scheduled five executions, though Roof is not included among that group, ending an informal moratorium on federal capital punishment as the issue receded from the public domain. The Supreme Court has temporarily halted the executions after some of the chosen inmates challenged the new execution procedures in court. I wish his execution was one of them so we can just hurry up and get him the hell up out of here because we are tired of seeing and hearing about him. He's 25 years of age now. Hopefully he will be out of here before or by the time he's 30. So that gives them between now and 2025 to really make this uh, a move unless it, or maybe 2026 depending when he turns 25 or when he turns 26 but i feel absolutely nothing for dylan roof never have never will he's getting exactly what he deserves first he had got attacked in that one prison by that um brother i forget his name but we put money on his books and he got out and then they had to move him and now he's getting terrorized the people that actually work there like I said, he left a stain on America with just that one act he did back in 2015. And he's pretty much on everybody's shit list, shit list, especially if they're black. Like it's it's probably two people in America that black people, I think, as a collective do not like Dylan Roof and George Zimmerman. Now, Zimmerman, he that's a whole lost cause within itself like i said he's broke and he's doing whatever he can to try to get money but for dylan roof he was the one that thought he could get away but did not get away and he will not get out of this i highly doubt he will ever get a pardon his crime is just too intense and if they want to see something pop off if he wants to see a quote-unquote race war pop off like he wants to let dylan roof walk out of jail a free man then they might actually see something happen it, imagine combining all the riots that black people have been involved with over the years into one big, I guess you can say, I guess you can say cannon and fire that thing off and see what happens if you if they let him out. And I don't think they want to do that because they know what will most likely happen. So if they're smart, they'll let him stay there and rot. No matter how many legal briefs he writes, no matter how many letters to the Associated Press that he writes, they mean absolutely nothing to them. And they damn sure mean absolutely nothing to us. And to this day, this idiot, this fool, this terrorist never even once apologized for what he did. He couldn't even do that. But he wants someone to garner sympathy for him. I think this is one of the few times where, as a collective, many black people were not on that forgiveness tip, with the exception, unfortunately, of the family or some of the family members of those who passed. But as a collective, many of us were glad he got what he deserved. And it's one of the few times where it actually where justice was actually served on the behalf of black people in this establishment. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. Have your notifications turned on and I will talk to you in the next one.